everyone. And welcome to After the Storm, the show where you'll see all sorts of spooky things. We'll have an intense pumpkin carving competition, an inspirational story about a struggling monster, and some funky Halloween costumes. Today is October 29th. I'm Melanie. And I'm Gia. And this is After, After the, the Storm. Storm. Get ready guys, because Spirit Week is right around the corner. We've got a fun week of themes coming up. Monday's Pajama Day. Tuesday's Twins Day. Wednesday's Bring Anything But a Backpack Day. Thursday's Celebrity Day. And Friday's Color Wars. Don't forget to wear your class color. Starting off our show today, we have quite the story of an ugly monster struggling to figure himself out. Man, I sure do relate with that guy. Well, Melanie, I think that's a story for another time. Let's get on with the video, shall we? <laughs> It's like being the ugly duckling, being left out of everything and being the only one standing out in the crowd and you just want to be like everybody else. It's horrible. I always have to sit in the corner. You know, I do all my homework in the bathroom alone. Everybody just makes fun of me and puts sticky notes on my back saying, kick me. I despise it. He comes to the class smelling like sewage and filth. Carl, he's he's a he's a special boy, don't you know? Very special. Uh, he's very nice. Works hard. He's got a, a very special face. His, only his mother would love. Really good face for radio. You know, it's like a rite of passage as a monster that. You gotta scare someone real good. Every time I've tried, people just laugh at me and they scare me. He's not scary, not at all. I failed, I'm a failure. I'm not scary. So why do you have to be scary? Uh, I think it's like the identity of all monsters. Like, the more I think, hmm. Now that I think about it, actually, no one's ever asked me that question. Why do I have to be scary? It was hard for the only monster in my school, but I learned one thing. I learned that society doesn't... Being scary is not the only thing to being a monster. Look, I'm an ugly monster. To share with other monsters or humans that what the world puts on you and tells you what to do is not always what is good for you. Just sharing the word about, you know, how to find your true identity. For me, it was realizing I wasn't scary. Wow, that really touched my heart. It was quite the inspirational story. It really was, but now we've got to move on. Next up, we've got quite the interesting pumpkin carving competition to show you. I'd call it scary, but the only spooky thing about it is how basic the other pumpkins were. Hello and welcome to the annual pumpkin carving contest. My name is Fiber Martinez and today I will guide you throughout today's show. Our first pair of contestants is Shiloh and Melanie who describe their design as a classic but with a twist. 
Our next pair is Adrian and Diane, who opted to go for an old-fashioned jack-o'-lantern design. Our last pair is Melanie and Gio, who decided to go with Oogie Boogie from the film The Nightmare Before Christmas. Here are the final results of each pumpkin before we head to the judges' lounge. So we had decided to go with like a jack-o'-lantern since it would be the easiest design to do since neither one of us had like any prior experience cutting pumpkins. So basically our pumpkin is better because I think we had the most creative idea honestly. I mean compared to like the big pumpkin. That that isn't, like it, you don't, sh their pumpkin is more gimmicky because they have props and they put ears in it. They just carved a regular jack-o'-lantern face, and I don't think that's really great. Me and Shiloh, we made a jack-o'-lantern with arms, and his name is Michael Pykel Feichel. Yeah, as you can tell, Michael Pykel Feichel is an A1 S-tier pumpkin, right? You can tell by the sharp lines of carving that we did this with acute um, detail and agility. So I think we're gonna start with this, this pumpkin. Is a, this is a bunch of average. Average? This is a bunch of average. I like it's good. the classic twist to it, but they got their own, you know, unique spice. You can't go wrong. Yeah. With the with the classic. With the classic yeah, but pumpkin. I'm gonna agree with you on the fact when you say it's average, like it is very average. Yeah. Uh, what about this one? I'm a fan. I mean, I like the intricate design to it. I like the effort I like and the, the creativity yeah. put into it. The windows are nice. Mm -hmm. I can see the initials. Yeah, the initials and the windows are nice. Yeah. yeah. Alright, Jumbo. Jumbo guy. Uh, nice arms. Yeah, I like the arms. That, that was creative. Oh, well. uh, but again, <laughs> the it, falls, of them. It, falls, it falls into the same problem as the first one. Yeah. And I that think is... the positioning of the arms would have been better at the ears. Yeah. So, I think it sounds like we've got a yep. winner. I think we've got a winner. Yeah. yeah. Alright. So, what do we need? This Here one? it is. Yeah. <laughs> Alright. Yay! Congrats, Middle Pumpkin. Yay. Congratulations. Not to pat myself on the back, but I think we did a pretty good job. I completely agree. Just like our pumpkin in the pumpkin carving competition, I think my costume is going to take the cake in this next video. Well, Melanie, I'm not too sure about that. Let's just let the viewers be the judge of that. Um, I'm not gonna lie, this is kind of last minute. And I'm dressed up as a hipster for Halloween. Cause you know, I enjoyed wearing Halloween costumes before it was cool. So I just went with whatever I had in my closet, and I saw a red dress, I was like, hey, let's just do red riding hat. But of course, you know, I'm not really a hipster, I'm just ahead of the culture. I'm ahead of the curve. I also have leggings on because I'm not allowed to be in a dress, so. Kind of ruined the costume. <laughs> kind of sad about that. I'm Raphael, I think. I, yeah, I'm a Ninja Turtle. You know? Yeah, you know, I'm a dinosaur as you can see. I look real nice. This ain't a costume either. I'm, I'm actually a dinosaur. So I'm basically Anakin Skywalker from the end of Revenge of the Sith. People follow my lead. Personally, I think the dinosaur was the best costume. After that dinosaur walk, I think I might have to agree with you. You know, the whole costumes and Halloween thing really confuses me. Like, what is it and where did it come from? Honestly, I have no clue. How about we watch this next video and find out? Dost thou not hear his cries? Canst thou not see the death he wrestles with? Beside that river, no ocean can surpass for rage and fury. What are you doing in my study? The what? I can't believe I have to do this stupid Halloween segment. 
All right, listen up. I'm only gonna explain this once. They were the Celts, right? These big muscly uh, dudes, right? They were huge with muscles and a bunch of tattoos. They're also the dudes that made up fairies, which are real, by the way. Do I keep going? So, the Celts were also really into their dead, to the point where they would make these huge bonfires to remember their dude bros. You gotta remember the bros. So, that's how Samhain was created. Like, you know, like Assassin's Creed? Bear with me. It's about to get messy. Ugh, not again. You really have to start paying the electric bill. Ah, no, I got an extra generator in the back. Ah, much better. Hmm. Okay. Where was I? Ah, right. Do you remember the potato famine? Well, when the Irish decided to immigrate to live the West Coast, East Coast lifestyle, they brought sewing with them. And also potatoes, but that's a story for another time. Okay, with that, they also brought many other traditions like stealing your front, someone's front gate, or um, apple bobbing, which is supposed to predict your love life, but I wouldn't know. I hate commitment. And Well, that's about as much energy as I have for this lunar cycle. See you ghoulies later. Honestly, half of that didn't even make sense. All I gathered from that was fairies, vikings, and something about bobbing for apples. I don't want to think about that anymore. It's just making my head spin. How about we talk about something else? Any ideas? Mm, I know there's a video about a horror movie tier list. Let's watch that. I don't know how you like to spend your Halloweens, but mines are spent surrounded by blankets and candy watching horror movies. So in the spirit of Halloween, I decided to ask 10 people for horror movie recommendations. Some were scary, others were confusing, and others were just plain traumatizing. But we're gonna put them all into one big tier list. So let's get to it. First, we're going to start off with the movies that I would put in D tier. In this case, there was only one movie, and that was Night of the Living Dead. Although I may be a bit biased because I hate zombie movies, the movie wasn't bad per se, it was just your basic zombie movie. But I definitely feel it would have been higher on this list had the movie had a higher budget. For C tier, I have two movies that also weren't bad, but weren't great either. Escape Room and Before I Wake. In Escape Room's case, the movie was just too predictable. Like there wasn't a single thing that happened in the movie that we didn't see coming from a mile away. Before I Wake was just boring. Like aside from a few jump scares, it wasn't very entertaining. It had a good overall message, which is why it's in C tier and not D tier. B tier was where I put all the movies that I thought were either basic or so bad that they were good. First we have Halloween Town, which is a childhood favorite. We all probably watched it at some point and outside of the nostalgia, it's a pretty okay movie, but an overall fun watch. Rubber was probably the weirdest movie on this list. I had no idea what to expect from a movie about a killer tire, but it certainly exceeded all of my expectations. It was hilarious and earned its spot in B tier. Next is John Carpenter's 1978 Halloween film. This movie was the birth of all slasher films and has basically every horror movie trope in existence. Still, if you're bored this Halloween, I definitely recommend watching it. For A tier, I only have one movie and that is Hocus Pocus. This movie is a timeless classic with a memorable cast and a soundtrack you'll probably remember years after watching. S tier was by far my hardest decision, but I think I went right with these three. First up, we have Midsummer. The whole movie felt like a fever dream, and I honestly still don't get exactly what it was I watched, but I would definitely watch it again. This movie is not for the faint of heart, but if you want a movie that will traumatize you, but in a good way, watch Midsummer. Next on the list is Don't Breathe. I could argue that this is the most entertaining movie on this list. Throughout the hour and 30 minutes I spent on this movie, I never once felt bored. Lastly, we have The Nightmare Before Christmas. Another timeless classic. There's a debate on whether or not this is a Halloween movie or a Christmas movie, but I personally think it's both. That's it for the tier list, but...
Remember guys, as you prepare for haunted houses, trick-or-treating, and other spooky festivities, watch out and stay safe this Halloween season. That's all for today. Thanks so much for watching. Remember to follow us on Twitter and Instagram at McFadderTV. From all of us here at McFadder TV, have, have a, a great, great day. day.